most of the films that I've seen, which had architectural roles, they looked very, you know, busy in life. They have this lifestyle, but in reality, it is just shown that way. The reality is not something very dreamy. It's a little hard hitting because you're not paid very well. It's like. Overly work done, but underly paid. My friends who have went on their own or even got placements, but for the designation of a junior architect, they were getting paid somewhere around 15 to 20. But just because I had a designation like a prefix of BIM architect, I was uh, earning the very first salary was something like almost two x than what they were earning. Hey, design enthusiasts! It's time to dive into another exciting podcast on Novate Channel. So welcome back and today is no ordinary day why because we have got a very talented architect anusha reddy in our studio anusha's story is like a roller coaster of passion choices and success anusha kicked off her architectural journey in texture in nagpur wowing everyone with her bim architect skills then she took the global stage becoming a bim specialist at efficiently a us based top tier company and now she is an integral part of the novator family today donning the hat of a leader and tailoring programs for architects and engineers like you to learn building information modeling so stay tuned and watch the video till the end as we unravel the perks of the bim side of the ac industry before moving forward if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell to never miss an update from us so let's dive in so let's welcome anusha it's great having you today here thank you for having me aspa i hope this will be as much as excited that i feel right now definitely i'm so excited for it when you got into the uh, architecture school you must have had a lot of perceptions before was there anything that changed after you got into the field oh for me i uh, like even in the first first year i always thought ki you know by the end of five years i'd be like having a great job i'd be earning a lot you know most of the films that i've seen which had uh, architectural roles they looked very you know busy in life they have this lifestyle which but in reality it is just shown that way the reality is not something very dreamy uh, it's it's a little hard hitting because you're not paid very well it's like overly work done but underly paid so that is one of the major hard hitting reality check i had when i was in my fourth fifth year again you know you i like i mentioned i had this connections with seniors and after graduation i was still was in touch just to know you know what are they doing i know a lot of people also applied for masters going to us let's say and even going to us or uk they were still struggling to find jobs and people who have found jobs again we think this is maybe an indian context issue maybe architects are not being paid well but it's like a global issue like everywhere architects are feeling uh, that you know they are being exploited right so like there are no certain work deadlines uh, there are project deadlines right. but they are not work boundaries right. sometimes you have to you know do extra working hours sometimes they turn into you working on the weekends maybe on holidays just so that you can get things done and i think this is also happening a lot because there is no streamline of work over the decades that was there but i think now it's changing uh, so i think the change is happening uh, people are also trying to learn new things learn new trends and i think we are just learning and unlearning every day as architects so nusha there are a lot of challenges in the industry that one go through be it related to pay scale or you know working hours or projects so uh, how what can one do to you know uh, change these hardships into opportunities uh okay so that's an interesting question and to personally let you know i did experience this soon after college where i had this uh, personal experience so after my graduation from spa uh, we had an student led initiative placement cell there was this one uh, organization which came as part of the placements and it's called texture that's in nagpur and in indore and i was selected for the designation of bim architect bim architect 
and to be honest at that point i was not aware of what bim does even mean okay so that was the first step for me to being even introduced to the word bim in itself which is building information modeling the reason for me being even shortlisted to that was uh, my portfolio consisted of a couple of projects that i have done on the software called revit which is completely different from a legacy tool called autocad where a lot of architects engineers use it for drafting uh, for cad computerated design and cam computerated manufacturing purposes but revit is something which you can easily convert the entire drafting or the basic idea of designing mm-hmm. into a 3d format not just mm-hmm. 2d but you can do three dimensional okay. and i've just was introduced to this like when i was looking at my seniors working on it in college i was just so interested to learn pick up a new software and that was the first stage you could say a hands of experience that i was having for myself and i did put that and i just completed my a uh, professional uh, you know like internship was a part of architecture curriculum and i did have some construction drawings and everything that i have done it so i think that was one of the checklist maybe the hiring people had in mind and when i asked them they said most of our work would be done on revit and uh, i think your portfolio and your profile actually matches to that and and that's it i like if you have to ask me a question like why did i went for bim or why did i choose yes. it was not like i chose bim i was chosen by bim wow that just happened and i actually feel that was i think a blessing in my career that just happened on its own so that's when i was uh, working in texture and nagpur as a bim architect and i've seen how that could uh, you know that was a game changer in the way i have seen my seniors like i said i did internship and the organization that i was working for my internship also had a lot of years of experience and they were still using cad okay so i could see that you know clear difference of how work can get done using cad and how it can get done using revit in itself so mm-hmm. it was just a software difference mm-hmm. but that had a huge command of how uh people at the office used to have a better you know lifestyle mm-hmm. than people who were uh, you know having those old workflows happening right. and to give you a monetary aspect i have seen my friends we all have you know uh, collectively graduated from sta if you see that you know maybe a different college graduates have a different value in the ac industry to be considered as architects my friends who have went on their own or even got placements but for the designation of a junior architect they were getting paid somewhere around 15 to 20 but just because i had a designation like a prefix of bim architect i was uh, earning the very first salary was something like almost 2x than what they were earning okay so yeah so even it was a complete shock for myself just to realize you know okay why is this happening why am i getting paid you know so that's when i started to do research what else can be done and i think that's where the learning curve has started for me especially associated to bim and my uh, peers at work were really amazing but usually that also happens like when you talk about how can upskilling you know takes place definitely at an academic level you will learn from your seniors or professors but they are not always available to you right again so you end up going to looking at youtube trying on your own having a hands on experience sometimes if you're again lucky enough you would find those mentors at work who will take some extra time to you know uh give you all the knowledge that is needed uh, to help you with you know meeting the project uh, deadlines as a team but most of the time again they have their own personal work commitments so you, do, you can't just expect your senior at work to sit with you mm. and give you you know right. a constant 24/7 support that doesn't happen you have to learn on the go and but again i think because of the pandemic online learning started uh, being encouraged in across all the industries so uh, even i was at that junction 
you know being as an vm architect there was a point where i was also thinking what is the next step for me do i have to pursue maybe a masters in construction management project management because i again realized this is something was getting paid well mm-hmm. you know it was getting respected well as a designation but when i spoke to again a couple of people and unfortunately pandemic happened so that decision was put on hold for a while and again i switched to job in between and i think this was again a remote working job uh, again as a bim architect slash specialist but after 3 years working as a bim architect i just realized this that the one way to overcome like being underpaid or you know being exploited at work and you know even upskilling is that you just have to constantly keep learning new things you have to feel however connected in your network maybe just go to linkedin you know look at what is trending just connect with professionals informally or formally just try to have conversations you know maybe just see if this is a certain path that you want to follow maybe somebody already who is at that position how is their profile looking like is is there something maybe go to glassdoor go to freshball see what salaries they are earning you know all of this would gives really good insights of uh, how you can plan yourself in the path that you are you know having a projection for your future and another thing definitely is to don't think twice just pick a new skill pick a new software uh, you know talk to your friends again i think nowadays millennials and gen zers are very much connected on social media maybe start putting questions on poll i don't know so this is also again a very informal way of learning new things and there are some open uh, workshops and talks that happen on linkedin again uh, sometimes you have to just go to maybe autodesk forum you might have to go to mechanics forum you know these companies that i'm seeing actually hold on to a lot of softwares so they have constant updates also happening every mm-hmm. year they release a new version so something will be completely different from an older version so you being very up to date is the only way you can be relevant with what is happening in the industry and once you are being relevant i think the hiring partners would love to have you as part of their organization and would love to pay what you are deserved so i think yeah so basically upskilling and networking and staying up to date yeah so you have to learn unlearn at times just keep practicing what you are doing because again without practice again you'll be lost so yeah just be connected learn new things keep doing what you're doing and that's a wrap for today's episode a massive thank you to architect anusha reddy for sharing her insights and unraveling her journey into the wonderful building information modeling world if you found this discussion as fascinating as we did please let us know in the comment section below don't forget to hit the bell icon subscribe to noveta channel right now and ring that notification bell to stay in the loop on all things about architecture and innovation this is noveta see you in the next one tribe until then let's dare to disrupt